A lot of people were worried Michael Bay was gonna cow a butt the Ninja Turtles. I've got good news for you today, folks. It's not a bad film. In fact, I think it's actually better than the 90s original. We must have watched different movies because all I saw was a computer-generated nightmare. Jessica Chobot, host of The Nerdist, is here. So get ready, because tonight we dine on turtle soup. The most important part of the Ninja Turtles films are the turtles themselves, and I'm happy to inform you, they're still intact. Leonardo leads, Donatello does machines, Raphael is cool but rude. Give me a break, Raphael is a douche! I actually agree, Raph is just a shit turtle in every version of the franchise. I don't understand the praise for him and his devil may care attitude. We all know Michelangelo is the superior turtle, what with those frat boy ways and those kick-ass nunchucks. Regardless of your turtle choice, my point remains, they're all still here, they're all having pizza, they're all having a good time. Yeah, mediocre pizza hut. And you just crossed the f***ing line, Jess. The 90s version gave us Domino's. That's the real star of this movie. With its family-friendly seating, full salad bar, and a book club program, Pizza Hut is the chain to look out for. It's the one you come back to over and over again. Can I get paid somehow for this? Okay, let's get back on track. The turtles may be radical, but why are they a story tall now? They're gigantic. Why do they even need to be ninjas at that point? They can pick up cars. They're not really lean green fighting machines anymore, and don't even get me started on Splinter. He looks like a wet hot dog dipped in hair. You can't beat the flawless voice works of Kevin Clash. But we do get to see him fight, and I thought that was pretty rat -ical. I was also pretty shell-shocked by Megan Fox's performance in the film, as she was actually pretty good. You can tell that she did care for the source material, you knew she was a big fan going in, and she played off a of Will Arnett pretty well. Why does Megan Fox look different in every scene she's in? I couldn't tell if she was CG2 or if they just kept letting her stand-ins do the lines. Where was Casey Jones? Oh right, he wasn't in it. Instead, you got Whoopi Goldberg. Pretty much the same thing. The world is screaming for a third sister act, and this is the way to do it. We slowly reintroduce Whoopi to a new generation of children, get her back in the limelight. Then when the time is right, which is very soon, might I add, toss in Anna Kendricks, toss in half the cast from Glee, throw Pipple in there as the crazy priest, and you have a sure-fired hit. What are you even talking about anymore? I'm sorry. I just wanted to get Whoopi back in the habit for a while now. Let's... Keep talking turtles with Shredder. Yes, James Saito plays him perfectly in the original. The suit matches his cartoon look to a T. Now he's apparently Iron Man. Times have changed, JC. You're gonna have to learn to live with that. Don't call me that. Our heroes in a half shell bulked up, and now they needed a more intimidating rival. I do wish we got to see an actual foot clan of ninjas, and not just your standard soldiers, but Shredder was pretty awesome. Certainly more threatening than that walking can opener you're referring to. For some reason, all these remakes and toy-based films need to justify the insanity of the concept. Where the 2014 Turtle script is a convoluted mess of exposition, the 90s flick keeps it simple and straightforward. Ninja Turtles is pretty dumb in that department too. However, I did like the connection between April and the Turtles, and there was a lot of playful jabs at the old series without being insulting. I'm not sure what it is about these new films lately and their focus on the human element instead of what we really want. The title characters. The turtles are not in the new film nearly enough. The 90s flick makes them the priority, along with Splinter. Oh, and it ended with a proper fight against the Shredder and not a game of Leap Turtle that leads to some stupid roller coaster ride down the side of a building. You want to talk fighting now? All right. This will be good. Thank you. This is the easiest win I've ever been handed in a category. Those tubular fights from the 90s look super cheesy today. There is actual choreography and contact since we have physical characters in suits fighting ninjas. The new movie is just a circle jerk of frantic close-up movements and an overabundance of slow motion to mask the lack of any sort of structured fight. 
I'll take Chris Slomo any day of the week over Casey Jones knocking someone into the air right before spewing out some lame one-liner. Then there's the incredible snow chase down the side of the mountain. I have no idea how they filmed any of it, and I assume 90% was computer generated, but it was really well done and a lot of fun to watch. The fight with the Shredder was a bit of a letdown in comparison, but it was still three times longer and a whole lot prettier looking than that joke of a fight in the first movie. There are training sequences, hand-to-hand -hand fights, my boy Casey Jones kicking ass, and the most important feature, it all being real. They are physically doing these stunts and it brings a larger level of realism to the picture. Let's move on to music because I can't wait to hear you bullshit your way out of that one. Alright, this is rough. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this is not easy. Brian Tyler composed the music on the new release and it's forgettable, which is a shame. The Turtle franchise has had some of the most memorable music with the cartoon and the last films. So it's too bad the new score is really uninspiring, but there is a silver lining in this playbook. In the elevator scene, they do a little beatboxing, the four of them. That's the Turtles I like. That's the Turtles I know. So you aren't even going to try and fight me on this. I suppose it's for the best when the pizza power is so strong in my movie. The main theme is Kawabangin, plus there's a little MC Hammer sprinkled in for good measure. I think we can both agree that neither of these films hold an anchovy to Vanilla Ice's masterpiece, Go Ninja Go, from Secret of the U's. Which is Ninja Turtles 2 for you dipshits. Agreed. I think I can speak for both of us when I say the Ninja Turtles films aren't the best way to spend your weekend. They have their moments, but there are far better movies to watch out there. The question isn't the quality though, it's which is better, and for that I say 2014. First off, don't ever speak on my behalf, and second, understand that any movie with a giant talking animal is automatically going to lose a letter grade for me. That being said, the 90s TMNT has a charm to it. There is personality there, and it doesn't seem like the same song and dance like these new films do. You can keep your fox, Adam, and I'll stick with my Casey. You're one bodacious babe for taking the time to feud with me, Jess. Why don't you tell the viewers where they can find your much, much more successful show? You can check out Nerdist News on Nerdist.com. It's three minutes of the best nerd news every day of the week. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I grew up with the Ninja Turtles, G1, as some of the kids on the internet call it. I had the Ninja Turtle action figures. I had the backpack. I had a Michelangelo basketball player. I don't, I don't know what this is. And I also had the cassette tape with Pizza Power and all that shit on it. Yet, I can still see the spirit retained in this new movie, but I'm guessing that's not the case for some of you. Let me know in the comments, vote for the winner, and remember, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. Seriously, I could have played a better April O'Neil. Throw me in a yellow jacket and boom, done. Sister Act 3. Breaking the habit. Sister Act 3, some habits die hard. Sister Act 3, none shall pass.